I'm Richard Raffin uh, and I'm going to show you how to rough down a bowl and hollow it. So I've got this bit of box elder, it's around 10 inches diameter, 250mm and I'm using a screw chuck which uh, is similar to the one I made uh, on one of the other videos. So a little hole up the middle more or less at right angles and this is going on to what's number 14 wood screw and plenty of friction on the back should hold it fairly well and run the lathe probably at about 100 rpm let's feed it on and then lock the spindle and just cinch it up so first thing with uh, got a bit of bark here it's just to see if it comes off or not wants to come off you can usually get a, a tool and uh, and just kind of try and lever it off that seems fairly solid but always be aware you might have a big lump coming off now the main thing with a blank like this it's being cut pretty well round uh, on the bandsaw so my first job is to get off the corners the real lumps either side to get the whole thing balanced up so I'm going to run it um, Turn the speed up uh, until the lathe starts rattling and then go down a little bit. So now I'm running at, uh, uh, it says 1800, it's not that small, like about 900, I think. So now you can rough down with a whole range of different gouges, and I'm going to run through them. Um, I normally rough down with a half inch spindle gouge uh, on smaller bowls and whatever you're doing you're going to be using this wing of the tool the left wing of the tool the tool starts on its side and then it comes sweeps into the corner and goes through an arc through the wood that's a half inch spindle gouge i have a tool which is i think it's a 9 16 it's a larger uh, tool designed specifically for this for doing the outsides of bowls um, it's a half round tool a long left wing and I have a fairly short right wing on my tools an asymmetric grind so I'll have a closer look at the shaving coming off the edge in just a minute when I've got the corner off so that's with my 9 16 so I can do that with a bowl gouge this is a half inch um, Henry Taylor bowl gouge again asymmetric grind with a long left wing As you can see it takes it off pretty well now you can also do stuff like that with a um, this is an old, uh, actually 1930s uh, spindle gouge, one inch spindle gouge with a fingernail grind. Not quite as efficient, but, uh, but pretty good. And I'm beginning to lose track of which ones I've used now. And this is a Thompson, which I've also ground with an asymmetric grind. You can see there that I didn't quite catch the edge at first, but you just need to roll the tool very slightly to pick up the shaving. So what is happening here is that the nose of the tool is doing most of the work in there and the bevel is not rubbing so what happens is that we get a cleanly cut but ridgy surface now i'm going to pull the camera in so you get a tighter view right so you've got these uh, cleanly cut ridges um, and that's because the bevel isn't rubbing so we'll just do a few more cuts on this side so you get the view watching the tool coming towards you So 
so you can see the shaving is coming off this part of the tool. That's the Thompson, which is a fairly open, uh, fairly thick tool. I do that with the uh, with, with the bowl gouge, which I'm looking for just now. This is um, the uh, again slightly deeper half round. Doing much the same thing. Whoops, and just taking the shaving off again that portion of the edge. And the difference between cutting here where you'll just drag the wood off eventually and just pivoting the tool round slightly, you can see how much more wood you take off just with a slight variation in the angle. There I'm not, because the flute's fairly steep there, it's not going to cut very much, whereas if I roll it round just a little bit it's going to be much wider. If I roll it right round, then the wood's going to be bearing down on an unsupported edge and that'll start to catch. So, somewhere in the middle, every time you'll need to just rotate the tool slightly to pick up the best shaving. Now those are the roughing cuts. I want to get the smoother ones. I'm going to come round this the same tool. This time I want to have the bevel rubbing, so I'm going to come into the wood and try and keep the bevel in here, rubbing against the bit I've just cut. The shaving is coming off nearer the point of the tool, just in there and you can see it's a nice kind of spiral coming off, which means a slicing. I do that with a spindle gouge. This is the conventional half inch spindle gouge. Doing much the same thing. But this is quite a long, the point of the cut is quite a long way from where it's sitting on the, on the rest, so I can feel the tool isn't really strong enough for that on this size bowl so which is why we have the the bowl gouges which are the deep fluted bowl gouges so I've got several options with this tool if I want to take a very heavy cut I'm going to be working just below the nose of the tool and you can see that again it's coming off this portion of the edge but we can also do with this tool we call a back cut which because the the edge uh, the bevel is fairly steep on the side of the tool you can have the flute upright almost upright and the shaving coming off the inside edge It's all a bit sticky this, so uh, just do another one. So it's coming off this time just about on the nose of the tool and slightly out towards the right. If you bring it right up to the right then the wood's going to be on an unsupported edge and it'll catch again. So you can start the back cut. So the tool rolled over about 45 degrees and then roll it upright to get a finer cut. And that will give you a pretty nice clean surface. Great way to practice using gouges is to rough out bowls, which is normally what is pretty much what I'm doing now. Now I can also do that with a spindle gouge, a larger spindle gouge. And when I first started, this is what I used because there were uh, I found a whole bunch of them at the local um, government surplus or wall, wall surplus store and uh, and so I made a lot of my early bowls with one inch 
spindle gouges. I didn't know that at the time, but didn't really appreciate what they were. But you can use this tool, but if you bring it round a little bit further, that's a, it's a big catch. So probably not the ideal to use ideal tool to use, but if that's all you've got, then that's what you use. I also had a time when I was playing around with much bigger gouges. People do wonder about this. This is a Glazer one inch uh, bowl roughing gouge and it takes a heck of a shape. Rest moved. But in fact, I generally prefer to use my shallower gouge. Um, which takes almost the same shaving and it's not I get there faster. And that's what you get. Now, if you're roughing down, um, that's probably all you need to do and then you just need to uh, either true up the edge or come in just to take the ragged corner away because it's a bit dangerous to have that around gets very sharp. I'm going to use the left wing and just pull that in on the base. Right so now we're on the bottom I'm going to use the the, the left wing of the tool, the long left wing tool right on its side and the hand is on the rest uh, and I'm basically going to squeeze the edge in. And then I can roll the tool over and get the bevel rubbing and have a shear cut back towards centre. And do that with uh, a deep fluted tool, which is this is the half inch deep fluted bowl gouge. Again with a fairly full left wing, full convex curve. And it's just much easier to do the the rim with that kind of scrape cut. It's really a, it's kind of sheer scrape um, and then roll the tool right over and use as the bevel riding as I go back to centre. And if you want to reduce a lot of the base uh, or cut a foot um, again you can use this tool to really kind of get in reduce stuff quickly. More often than not when I'm on a base I'm going to be using the half inch spindle gouge because if I want to get in and cut a foot it's going to be much easier to do that with the fingernail point on the spindle gouge uh, because it can get into a corner whereas a deep food bowl gouge, at least mine, it's extremely difficult to get it in and cut a nice clean corner was the, the spindle guard much easier for all that. Also want this flat across the bottom which I hadn't done so just true that up on the rim, roll the tool over and take a sheer cut back to the middle. And check it and that means it'll sit nicely in a chuck. Now whilst I'm out here I uh, might as well show you um, how the tools slice rather than scrape. Oh, that's recording. Yes, it'll be quite good. Just need to come across. So to shear cut, this is the half inch spindle guide, just gonna get a smooth surface so we can have a look at the uh, at, at what happens. Now the thing to remember is that with turning the constant is always the wood is coming down onto an edge and if you can hold that edge the portion which is cutting at around 45 degrees to the wood as it comes down you'll get a curly shaving. If you get that edge very steep I'll rest in the way there get that very steep then you'll get a, just a smaller narrower shaving 
Um, now that's with uh, that was with the uh, with the tool pointing up. Um, you don't I don't use the tool that way generally to make a shear cut. I tend to have the tool pointing in the direction I'm going. Uh, but the same thing's happening. The, the constant is the wood coming down, and I'm going to get a shaving there. If the tool is right on its side. Uh, the, 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 the nose the tool is just butting straight into the grain and it doesn't really uh, cut at all. With the, uh, the deep fluted tools, this is the deep fluted half inch deep fluted bowl gouge, uh, I'm going to get a, a, my finishing shear cut off the right wing there and the bevel is rubbing. I'm going to do this with a larger tool. This is the big glazer one. Same principle. The portion of the edge cutting is going to be to get the slice is going to be in there. And if I have the tool on its side, you can see that I really don't get a shaving at all. So just to recap, so if you're going to be doing uh, looking for my open gouge. So with the roughing cuts, I'm trying to keep this portion of the edge at around 45 degrees to the wood as it comes past, and that gives you that nice little shaving. And just move the rest out so I'm more over the tool post. And if I want a shear cut, I'm generally going to come have the tool pointing in the direction I'm going. And then the, by right, keeping the bevel on the wood, you ensure that you get a nice smooth surface. And all you have to do then is move from A to B smoothly, and you should cut a smooth curve and get a, uh, a more than sandable finish. In fact, that finish is good enough just to keep, as it's almost a shame to sand it. Now, um, I'm just going to get another foot on this, uh, slightly, slightly deeper foot, and then we'll turn it around and have a look at the internal cut. There's the half inch spindle guard again, on its side into the corner, and then I pivot it on its nose and just squeeze the tool back. And provided I've got a nice little corner in there where I've marked it with the pencil, um, the chuck jaws will snack into there um, or the base here will go in, into the bottom of the chuck uh, and that will ensure the things running true. You don't need to have a flat surface at the top of the foot uh, for face work anyway. Right, we'll turn this round. Okay, that's my, that's my uh, dust hood falling apart which I'll put back in a minute. Now this is um, and my trusty assistant here, Dave behind the camera, puts it all back for me. Um, so with this I've got a, a wrench on the back and it's, ah, it's got it off. So that's a good kind of indication of if you've got a nice big backing plate here um, you get a very good grip on these um, uh, on a blank. So this is going into a uh, step jaw chuck. This is a Vic Mark step jaws on a on a VM uh, 100, which is the smaller chuck. And it doesn't go all the way in, uh, or the uh, the foot bottoms out uh, into the chuck. So um, the uh, the jaws are only going halfway up the foot I had, so I didn't need to do one that big. But that's going to be all right. Right, so here we are remounted into the um, step jaws. Um, I don't normally bother to drill a depth hole, but... Um, we will on this occasion um, from roughing out a bowl. We'll just make a little kind of starter hole for the, uh, for the depth gouge. This is a twist drill with some marks on it. 
uh, which you put on on the grinder and uh, just need to push it in basically to one mark and it tells you or it gives you some, uh, a warning of when you're getting near the uh, bottom of the bowl. Uh, the main thing here is to I think flatten it off first so I'm going to do that with uh, we'll start off with the bowl gouge anyway this is the deep fluted half inch deep fluted bowl gouge I'm going to use the wing of the tool here the tools right on its side flutes this way facing towards me facing towards the wood and I've got my hand on the chuck and just squeezing the tool in get a smooth surface and I can roll the tool over and take a shear cut with the bevel rubbing back to center and I can just pivot the tool around a bit and go in towards the bottom. <coughs> uh, from now on I'm aiming to line the bevel up with the direction I want to go, ease the tool into the wood and then once I'm in the wood I rotate it very slightly anti-clockwise and that picks up uh, a better shaving. Uh, I'm holding it underneath so you can see what's happening. Normally I have my hand over the top and once you're in the wood you hardly need the, the hand on the rest because the uh, gravity will keep the tool on the rest and the wood's pressing down anyway so from thereafter if you want to go straight in you're going to line the bevel up ease the tool into the wood then rotate very slightly and round into the bottom it's with a one inch bowl gouge it's a uh, half inch bowl gouge rather it's the same as the three eighths um, this is a D-way tool. And that's really the most efficient way, I think, of uh, getting the inside out. If I want to use the spindle gouge, I can, but it's, you know, if you're on a small bowl, it might be all right, but it's really not strong enough tool. It's beginning to just feel it flexing a little bit. If I want to use a larger gouge, get a wonderful shaving. But I'm not sure it's so much better really than the standard bowl gouge. The deep fluted bowl gouge has been around for a number of years and not a popular tool for nothing. Now you can also do all that and when I was first started I worked a lot of teak uh, which some of which was very hard and uh, in fact it was, it was full of silica and I didn't want to waste good gouge steel expensive gouges so I used square and scrapers. And you just feed the tool in. So you get rid of a lot of material very quickly but you generally get a better cut um, and work more efficiently with the uh, with the bowl gouges. If you've only got the, uh, the spindle gouge then the old soft spindle gouge you can use that. But the problem is that you're very close to a nasty catch because if you catch that top wing it's just going to whack back. So that's about it. So uh, just trying to take a little bit too much at one go there. So just do that again. So there that's trying to take too much in one go so I need to Pivot back off the bevel heel. Take it in two.
Now this is just roughing out a bow. And all I really need to do is um, leave it with an even wall thickness. The rule of thumb is about one inch of wall thickness. Uh, sorry, 10% of wall. Uh, the wall thickness should be 10% of the diameter. So in this case, 10 inch bowl, you wanted the wall thickness about an inch thick, 250 mil, 25 mil. And I'm going to have to reverse this eventually onto a chuck when I come to, uh, to remount it, and that'll be all in a separate little video. And so I put a couple of little shoulders in there into which I can expand the jaws later. And that's it for roughing a ball.